Καλημέρα σα. Καλημέρα σε όλου και καλώ ήρθατε στο τρίτο Athens Fashion Film Festival. Ο τίτλο τη φετινή διοργάνωση είναι Touch Me Not, Me Mo Up. Είναι η πρώτη φορά που κάνουμε ψηφιακή πρεμιέρα, χωρί όλου εσά φέτο. Ωστόσο, με χαροποιεί πολύ το γεγονό ότι έχουμε και, έχουμε και πάλι δίπλα μα του σταθερού μα συνεργάτε και υποστηρικτέ του Φεστιβάλ, το Υπουργείο Πολιτισμού, την Ιταλική Πρεσβεία, το Ινστιτούτο Ιταλιάνου Δη Κουλτούρα, το, την Εταιρεία Ανάπτυξη και Τουριστική Προβολή Αθηνών, αλλά και νέου συνεργάτε όπω το Τσέχικο Κέντρο Αθηνών και βέβαια το ΕΚΟΜΕ, που στάθηκε δίπλα μα φέτο στην πολύ σημαντική πρωτοβουλία. Designing Film, που ξεκινάει επίσημα αύριο. Λοιπόν, θα πω δύο λόγια για το φετινό πρόγραμμα, για να μην πάρω πολύ χρόνο, γιατί έχουμε ήδη χάσει χρόνο από την, από την ώρα την προγραμματισμένη. Το φετινό πρόγραμμα έχει δομηθεί γύρω σε τρεις άξονες, πολύ σημαντικοί και οι τρεις. Το, διαγωνιστικό, το διεθνές διαγωνιστικό, το, με το νεοσύστατο ελληνικό διαγωνιστικό τμήμα, για το οποίο είμαστε πάρα πολύ χαρούμενοι, 11 ταινίε μεγάλου μήκου ενταγμένε σε διάφορε θεματικέ όπω ε, τη θεματική design, film, touch me not και μια σειρά από καταπληκτικά ντοκιμαντέρ, βιογραφίε μεγάλων εμπνευσμένων σχεδιαστών μόδα. Και τέλο, τι διαδικτυακέ συζητήσει όπω η σημερινή, που είναι η πρώτη ε, του φε... ενό κύκλου που θα είναι μέχρι το τέλο, θα συνεχίσει μέχρι το τέλο του φεστιβάλ. Εδώ με τίτλο, η σημερινή μας συζήτηση έχει τίτλο Big Production Filming, The Case of Greece. Έχουμε επιλέξει να εστιάσουμε στην Ελλάδα, στην Ελλάδα σαν προορισμό γυρισμάτων ε, κινηματογραφικών και τηλεοπτικών παραγωγών. Ευχαριστώ λοιπόν θερμά τους καλεσμένους μας τον, ε, ε, και θα ξεκινήσω με τον φίλο και παραγωγό Rick Porras, my friend, good friend and producer. Rick Bores, τον επίσης παραγωγό Richard Sharkey και τον πρόεδρο του ΕΚΟΜΕ Πάνο Κουάνη για το χρόνο τους και θα περάσω τώρα τον λόγο στο συντονιστή μας, Πατρίς Βιβάνκος. Πατρίς, ο λόγος σε σένα, σε ευχαριστώ και σένα για, το, για, για τη συμβολή σου. Ο λόγος πια σε σένα, σας εύχομαι σε όλους τους καλές προβολές, να είστε μαζί μας, να μείνετε μαζί μας μέχρι το τέλος του φεστιβάλ. Ευχαριστώ πολύ. So yeah, my name is Rick Porras, and um, I was uh, lucky and blessed enough to meet uh, Richard Sharkey back in Lord years ago, and we've we've been close friends ever since. And uh, I'm excited to be able to do this panel with you, Sharkey, and also with Panos, who as I, I was able to meet back in uh, February of last year, before we uh, went into this lovely COVID experience. So great to see you again, Panos. Um, should I go ahead and Talk a bit about, uh, okay, okay. Yeah, um, well, I, for us as, as people from outside of Greece, um, you know, it's, it's, it's really important to be able to handle a lot of different aspects of, of film production. So why don't, yeah, why don't we first talk a little bit about Panos? About Absol absolutely. Well, uh, uh, first of all, uh, I would like to thank uh, Nicole and Maria for the invitation and for their hospitality. Uh, I am Panos Kouanis, uh, President and CEO of ECOME, the National Center of Audiovisual Media and Communication in Greece, an organization supervised by the Ministry of Digital Governance. Uh, three years ago, we embarked on a very adventurous journey. It was difficult and demanding, full of obstacles, but at the same time exciting at the very end, very rewarding. As with hard work, persistence, and perseverance, we managed to accomplish a lot more than we expected in a very short period of time. Our initial plan may have sounded or looked simple, especially in the eyes and ears of an outsider. Sorry? But for someone who knows our country, it wasn't. And what was the idea? To make our country a film-friendly country. What this meant in practice was to create a whole ecosystem a set of infrastructures that combine, operate in harmony, and in such a way that reveal the real potential of our country, Greece. What it can offer to its own people, as well to the producers from all over the world, who decide to visit us and honor us with their presence in order to materialize their film or TV production in Greece. Today, 
I am proud to say, we're all, we are all actually proud at the GOME to say that we have accomplished this task. We have managed to create successfully and constantly test a permanent system that allows the creative industry of filmmaking and storytelling from all over the world to come to Greece and be able to thrive and produce with all the necessary tools in hand. Our aim was to create very attractive incentives and at the same time be able to facilitate in the most efficient way producers and production service companies coming from all over the world in order to materialize the story in Greece for audiences to watch and upload. In order to accomplish that, we started with the very basics as we live in the material world, money. But we ended up with the most important thing in life, which is people. Let me elaborate on that. The first thing that we did was we provided the industry with a strong and competitive financial incentive. To be more accurate, we created two incentives. We currently have a very successful cash rebate program of 40% with a cap of 12 million euros and the eligibility of non-resident labor for projects over 8 million euros in Greece. Eligible expenses include above the line up to 35% of the total eligible expenses incurred in Greece, non-resident labor up to 50% of total eligible expenses, and most of the below the line expenses with a few limitations exclusions. I won't go into detail for that. Producers may visit our website or get in touch with us and we are more than willing to provide them with all the necessary information. We also created a tax relief program for potential investors in order to attract private investors in filmmaking that deducts actually 30% of eligible expenses of a film production from the net taxable income of an individual or a legal entity. The tax rebate program may be combined with the cash rebate program and has the same eligible costs. The other thing that we did is that we created the basic infrastructure for servicing the production companies coming to Greece. This new service-oriented approach in our country focused on providing tailor-made full services with less bureaucracy in two levels. The initial service provided by Comer, who created a central point of communication for the whole application process and implementation of a production in Greece, with an easy and fast-track process, as both the cash rebate and the tax relief programs operate through an online electronic application system from the very beginning of the initial application during pre-production of the film to the very end with the payment of the cash rebate or the tax return. It is an easy process made to work for each individual project with basic and simple requirements. The script and the cultural test, the budget and the financial plan, cast and crew information. The Greek cash rebate program is highly bankable. It can be used for gap financing and short-term loans for cash flow of the production. It is co-production friendly as it may be combined with other state aid programs up to 80% of the eligible budget. And it is undoubtedly credible as we have a two-tier auditing system. Your only obligation as a production is to come to Greece, use our locations and people and mention us in the credits. And for that, we have created a very, very attractive logo. Great. We Great. also provide producers and fortunate event changes in the production, which in, you know, in filmmaking happen very often. And other things that we provide is the service provided on location. For that, we cooperated and still cooperate closely with the 13 prefectures in the two key cities, Athens and Thessaloniki, in order to set up the local film offices. Those initial 15 film offices all over Greece provide production service companies with all the necessary information and assistance, a variety of locations depending on the needs of each project, the, the permits for shooting, local cast and crew, especially extras, solutions in accommodation, transportation and catering issues. Our aim is to provide guidance and highly personalized service with confidentiality from a team of experts on location and at the Comer. And that is for any budget, low, medium or high. We value all productions coming to our country. Shall I go on or do you want me to? Well, let me let me just ask you this and, and then I and then I'll and then I'll uh... To turn to Sharky, who's got even more, you know, immediate, you know, uh, experiences. But um, I, I think, I guess, the question I have, and I want to catch it with my own experience with that I had with Sharky from years ago, which is that, you know, New Zealand really did a wonderful job, um, you know, before even Lord of the Rings showed up, you know, putting together a tax incentive credit that 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 worked and that was and that was significant for. Um, for productions to, to consider. Um, and then also put uh, effort into 
figuring out what it was what was important to New Zealand, which was, you know, in, in one respect, creating um, a collaborative environment, but also um, having an environmental, um, you know, message, you know, that's very important to New Zealand for obvious reasons. It's a beautiful place and it's part of its brand. And in a way it kind of mirrors what, uh, what Greece has at its disposal, just such natural beauty. And so they, they, they created these, these environmental standards um, before we showed up with Lord of the Rings so that they already had systems in place, people in place so that a production like Lord of the Rings and the ones that followed could actually work well in the country and not in a disruptive way, but in a positive way and in as much of a uh, zero footprint as possible way. And, you know, that was something that took them a few years to get going because they realized that was something that was really important to their society. You know, another thing they did is they really um, opened up the 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 yeah. interaction with government as well as the military. So th we Make actually had roads cool. that were built uh, by the New Zealand uh, um, Army Corps of Engineers. Okay. Um, it, it was great. They got practice at working on roads, which is something they're always wanting to practice on. And for us, it was great because we got to you know get proper roads into some locations that were maybe difficult to reach. And then we had this nice kind of handoff between government and business where uh, you know, there was a really strong digital fat pipe they'd created there for, for data, and we were able to interact with New Zealand Telecom, and you know, we started to use um, some of their satellite ability to, to, for our own communications out in the field, um, and doing things now that we take for granted, like video conferencing. Um, and then lastly, they did a great job at really getting the word out to all the local communities, and it became sort of a a, a group effort, you know, that we, we had so much support from all the different areas we went to, and it was all very positive. And there was just such great goodwill to productions, not just Lord of the Rings, but the ones that followed. And I think that's something that really has gone a long way to growing that industry. And it feels to me from the bit that we've discussed in the past, that that's really starting to happen in Greece. You put a lot of effort in lining certain things up for a few years now and growing, you know, I know Greece has had tough times in the past, but it really does feel like there's this desire to create that goodwill that, that is so important and have um, that synergy between the government and local business and these productions coming in. Is there anything that you're finding that, that you know, you still are working on that you still, you know, feel like, hey, we can keep doing better in, in a certain area, or do you feel like you're starting to find that sweet spot? Well, the, the thing is that, you know, we, we, what we, what, well, first of all, I have to say that, you know, New Zealand is an amazing example. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a real success story. And we've been uh, actually, we, we've been studying New Zealand uh, uh, and how they might, you know, how, how New Zealand managed, you know, to actually uh, 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 be so competitive in, in, in a few years, uh, uh, thanks to all this effort that you explained to us. Uh, well, you know, especially during the during 2020, we've been following very closely uh, uh, the competition. You know, you know, during the crisis, uh, and and we we've been trying to to find ways to uh, uh, come back. You know, be more proactive, and uh, that's why last year we uh, immediately after you know the 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 pandemic. You know, when you know when the lockdown uh, 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 finished and the country opened, we made the two major changes in the rebate. As we saw, you know, other countries, you know, being very, very active and very uh, 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 proactive in this uh, uh, area. Uh, you know, uh, Spain changed the uh, Spain changed its rebate. It went up, you know, uh, much higher, and, and other countries also. So anyway, we we always uh, uh, try to see what goes wrong uh, if there is something that we have that we can uh, ameliorate and, and 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 make much much better in any aspect whether it's the, fi the financial incentives or infrastructure uh, uh, the film offices are now uh, uh, they are now opening slowly slowly so there are many problems there uh, that we are facing uh, during this initial stage of, uh, of setting them up uh, all over Greece uh, there are also sometimes problems with uh, with uh, with uh, with permits, uh, and this is something that we have to uh, make sure that we respect. Uh, uh, this is what you said also. You know that we have to respect uh, uh, the 
the monuments and the sites and everything, uh, uh, they should be open, you know, for shooting. But at the same time, the production companies and uh, the cast and crew working uh, has to respect uh, uh, the locations. Pano, Pano, sigonomi, sigonomi. Αν μου επιτρέπεις, θα ήθελα εγώ να κάνω μια ερώτηση στο Ρίτσαρντ. Ναι, ένα άλλο ωραίο παράδειγμα είναι το Μάρκο Πόλο, η σειρά Μάρκο Πόλο, έτσι. Πού θα μπορούσαμε να συζητήσουμε. Το γεγονός είναι ότι η σειρά Μάρκο Πόλο είναι μια εξαιρετική περιπτωσιολογική μελέτη. Άρα, αν έχουμε το Μάρκο Πόλο φυσικά, έχουμε τη Βενετία, αλλά όχι την Κίνα ή τη Μογγολία. Έχουμε το Καζακστάν και τη Μαλαισία. Και ακόμη, ακόμη, έχουμε την Ουγγαρία και τη Σλοβακία για κάποιες σκηνές. Ας αρχίσουμε από την αρχή, έτσι. Γιατί το Καζακστάν. Να δούμε αυτό πρώτα. Ας δούμε μια ιδέα. Uh, decided to plant ourselves in Malaysia. Um, in the beginning, it was felt that China would be the right place to go. Uh, the Chinese were very proactive in, in, in uh, promising all sorts of money, financial support and political support. We got very close to making the deal there, um, but then we, we realized that there was going to be some government sensitivity towards uh, the way in which we told the story. Um, in other words, that would be censorship. And our creatives uh, and our producers weren't comfortable um, with the interference that, 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 that might have taken place. And at the same time, Malaysia had just built themselves um, a film studios down in uh, southern Malaysia on the border with Singapore. And they were looking for a, uh, you know, a, a, a partner, a, a first tenant to go in and Uh, it was felt that the numbers added up with there at the time it was a 30% rebate and it was uncapped. Um, we were spending you know, $100 million or more uh, on, on that show. And so it felt like a very good place to go. Uh, we, need, we felt we needed to be in Asia at, at the very least. Um, however, Malaysia doesn't have the big vistas and landscapes that Mongolia uh, would have had, which is you know, where the show is set. Um, So the first thing I did was fly up to Mongolia to have a look. Um, it is undoubtedly beautiful. It is the right place to, uh, to be creatively. However, they didn't have a film industry. They had no infrastructure and they also had very poor communication links. Um, we could not fly through of three or 400 people into Mongolia uh, and uh, enjoy any sort of level of um, Well, success. And uh, so down in, uh, in, in Kazakhstan, they had about six or eight years earlier shot a movie called Nomad, which was, uh, it was a, a story of, of the Genghis Khan or Chinggis Khan dynasty. Beautiful, beautiful movie. Um, and uh, uh, that was my next stop. So I went to Kazakhstan. There was no rebate there, but they did have these incredibly unique vistas And they had a, a, a film in the industry infrastructure. They have the president there was, was very, has been for many years, supportive of film. Uh, and for us, the best thing that they had was, was horses and horsemen. You know, we could easily find two or 300 horsemen um, you know, to go in front of the camera, dress them up. And you know, the, the, these guys have been riding horses since they were two years old. So that's why Kazakhstan and not Mongolia or China Um, and that was season one. Now, season two, however, Kazakhstan was very difficult still to get in and out of, um, and it made it very expensive. So in season two, we figured, well, where else could we go uh, that had big wide vistas? And maybe it wasn't as beautiful as Kazakhstan, but Hungary um, gave us the opportunity to not only tick the box of landscapes that worked, horsemen, a, a legacy, a history of horsemen, but also a very developed film industry, which has proven very successful over the last 20 years, supported by a very robust and reliable rebate system. So 
for us, it all happened in the right order. The creativity was number one, it's fantastic. Then the infrastructure and then the finance. Typically, however, when you go to a studio with a new story, the very first question they will ask you about is the, is, is the rebate. And so it's very pleasing to see that Greece, you know, can tick that box very, very easily. The next thing as a line producer that, that I'd be looking for um, is the infrastructure. You know, what, you know, do we have to bring everybody in from outside or is there some kind of established film industry? Is that de developed enough to support the level uh, of production value that, that we're bringing in? Um, and that's usually defined by the size of budget that we have. Um, and then finally, it usually is the landscapes and the creativity, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so there is no right or wrong way or right or wrong order for these things to happen. Um, as long as they happen. That's, uh, Sharky, do you feel, it, Sharky, is there a, is, is there a, um, is there anything that, you know, those are, the, those are the, the standard things that, you know, you're seeing on every, every country on some level. Are there certain things that you found, I found in, other, in certain countries that like, you, you think it's been quite beneficial to that country in terms of the way it's evolved with, you know, fostering these types of, of productions? Like in terms of South yeah. Africa, you mentioned once what they were doing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, absolutely. I mean, South Africa is is a very good case in point. Um, I recently shot two seasons of a show called Warrior down there, which um, you you can see on the HBO Max channel. Just just arrived uh, a few weeks ago. I want to plug in for that. Um, but um, you know, when I was first approached about that show. Um, I was asked, you know, where can we afford to make this? Because it was set in the 1880s. It was set in Chinatown okay. of San Francisco. And so you wouldn't necessarily expect that we would end up shooting this thing at a studio in Cape Town in South Africa. Um, you know, there's not a huge Chinese community down there, you know, for example. But there was enough. There was enough for us to work with. Um, South Africa, they have a rebate. It's not a huge rebate um, in the comparison to what, what Greece is, is, is putting forwards. Uh, and, and it is limited to a certain extent. Um, however, what they had was very experienced, very cost effective labor. And I was able to make that particular show on a much lower rebate, but only bringing, forgetting about cast, only bringing five technicians from overseas to make it work. Whereas usually I'll bring 300 technicians from overseas to make something work. Um, so the fact that their rebate was much, much lower was made up for the fact that their skills level, their skills base and their experience with, um, you know, quote unquote, Hollywood productions was much more higher and more relevant. And they got to that position over the last 10 or 15 years of focusing a huge amount on um, skills, training, apprenticeships, and knowledge transfer. And that's something that, you know, I was happy and lucky and proud enough to, 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 to get involved in. And each season as we went through, you know, we would hire between 35 and 40 young kids who are coming out of, um, you know, uh, film school or, 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 or some, some education program to work with us um, and then the second year, half of those at least, we brought them back in fully paying positions. Uh, mm. So that was very gratifying, very important. And you know, for me, one of the nicest things that happened in the early days of that show was that a guy came and tapped me on the shoulder and said, hi, Rich, do you remember me? And it was a guy I'd met 15 years ago when I'd been doing a Michael Mann movie in South Africa, uh, at the time, he was basically a street kid. And 15 years later, he was our best boy. He, ah. so he was our second in charge electrician. He owned a bunch of trucks with equipment. He employed people. He had a wife and a family. He had two cars. He had a mortgage and all that debt that, uh, that, that uh, we are so used to and we aspire to. So, when I met that guy again, he was living proof that the education and knowledge transfer works, the benefits to society and the people 
work. And the fact that we were there means that the rebate and the economic system is working for South Africa. Who yeah, now I, have... I, like the, I like the way they made the most of that moment. They didn't, they, they, they actually built that into their system. You know, in, in New Zealand, they did similar things, but they also benefited from just some good luck of having camera crews that were used to doing a lot of commercials, a lot of car commercials. So they were used to using the latest cameras. So we didn't, as you recall, we didn't have to worry about that with the camera crew. Amen. And, you know, departments like the costume department were actually used to doing gigantic productions because there had been Hurricane Zena TV show prior to. So we benefited in some areas, but there were in other areas that were new. You know, there had never been a grip crew, you know, doing anything for the size that we had in rings. You know, the typical grip crews before Lord of the Rings were two and three persons, right? I believe that, you know, that, that, that the building skills and specialized skills for, for, for crew especially is very important. And, and when, a, when a big production okay. comes to a country, they bring the skills and the expertise, you know, from the crew from abroad, you know. And, 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 but, but, but from your experience, uh, do you think that, you know, uh, uh, specialized uh, 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 educational programs, you know, training programs or internship programs, you know, with production companies, do they help in, in building, a, 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 you know, a specialized crew? Yes, um, is the short answer. I mean, what I think was most successful in South Africa is that you know, they had their their education system. There were people who had been motivated enough to go to film school or to go to college and learn about you know, programming for visual effects. That's something that's very, very strong in South Africa right now. Their visual effects business is growing. And it's exactly what happened in New Zealand. And now they have Weta in New Zealand, who is arguably the leading visual effects company in the world. Um, but the problem that, 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 that certainly had in, in, in Cape Town to begin with was they would come out of college and out of school and they'd have nowhere to go. They'd have no practical contacts. So the training and development agencies, who were actually at the time nothing to do with the film commission, um, they later sort of merged. Um, but the training and development a a agencies you know, went to the film commission and the film producers and said, would you please ask the incoming international shows to take on five or six technicians or five or six trainees and we will pay them as in the training commission would give them some kind of small payment um my company our company would insure them uh make sure that they were legal and legitimate on set and then at the end of three months six months nine months whatever whatever the length of the production might have been they came out with real world vocational hands-on experience and more importantly some contacts and those people who would then establish freelancers who'd go on to the next show would naturally take them with them and then bring the, give them proper jobs um leaving space for the next entrance richard maybe one question more ένα ερώτημα παρακαλώ καταλαβαίνουμε τη σπουδαιότητα Τη γνώση, τη εγνωμοσύνη σε κάποιε χώρε. Η Αφρική, η Νότια Αφρική είναι ένα πολύ καλό παράδειγμα. Αλλά είπατε ότι φέρατε μόνο πέντε τεχνικού στην Νότια Αφρική, αν άκουσα καλά, λέει ο Πατρί. Σωστά. Πόσου φέρατε στη Μαλαισία ή στο Καζακστάν, about 30 million dollars, give or take. Um, and the part of the reason for that was that we could employ locally, which made South Africa very local. In fact, it made the difference between um, shooting the series and it not ever happening because the studio weren't prepared to put any more than a certain amount of money in. So, you know, a lot of the American creative team weren't very happy that they had to leave home and that they had to go halfway around the world and, and, and live in Africa. They didn't understand that what a beautiful place it was. At the end, they were all crying because they didn't want to leave. And I, I have this experience a lot. Um, however, in Malaysia, um, where there was no established film industry back in 2013, I think when we went there for the first time, um, yeah, they had a small industry that was used to uh, working on local productions, 
and maybe the odd commercial that came through. Um, and that was very established in Kuala Lumpur. And their business model, their infrastructure was geared towards charging relatively high prices for very, for very short periods of time. And when I said to the guys in Kuala Lumpur, hey, would you like to come and work for nine months for me down in southern Malaysia? But I can't afford to pay your short term commercial prices. Nobody wanted to give up the life that they'd built in Kuala Lumpur because the local industry and the local commercials industry serving international crews you know, could pay a lot more on a daily basis. But long form drama, frankly, doesn't pay as well if you're a rank and file crew member. And that applies to whether you're working in Los Angeles on, on, on TV scale or on feature films. It's starting to change. However, that is starting to change because, you know, Companies like Netflix, Amazon, Apple, you know, the, the major global streaming platforms um, are now demanding that the quality and production um, design and production values are so much higher that they must meet feature film standards now. And the only way you get that is by employing feature film crew and the feature film crew say, well, why should I work for less money? When I Ωραία, για να κατανοήσω λίγο καλύτερα. Εσείς πάτε σε μια ξένη χώρα για την κρίση μιας ταινίας. Έχετε το πρόγραμμα έκπτωσης φόρου ή επιστροφής χρημάτων από τη μία πλευρά. Έχετε το κόστος ζωής, ωραία, ενώ στη μέση έχετε το κόστος του προσωπικού που φέρνετε ή που πρέπει να προσλάβετε. Αυτό σημαίνει ένα συγκεκριμένο κομμάτι της παραγωγής. For me, it's it's fairly easy because what what, what the studios tend to do, um, because they are run by financiers. I mean, it is a business. It, it you know, so you know, for so many years, I was given scripts and said to, people would say to me, "How much do you think this will cost?" And I'd go away and I'd spend weeks and weeks doing a budget, and I'd come back and they'd say, "Well, that's too much. It needs to be twenty million dollars cheaper." So I'd say, "Well, why didn't you tell me that to begin with?" So now I ask the studios, how much money have you got to spend? And then I back into the number. And so those three variables that you're talking about, about you know, the, the level of rebate, the availability of infrastructure, um, the, the, the quality and the, 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 the cost of living and the cost of the actual crew members, they're different. The equation is different in every country, but you end up at the same number. And so then I go back to the studios and say, all right, you can go to any one of these three countries and spend the same amount of money, but then I switch it around and say, but creatively, you will gain this in this country. You will have to give that up in another country. It will take you longer to shoot somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Or it might be that the actor doesn't want to go halfway around the world. He wants to, wants to just shoot in their backyard and take their kids to school every day. There's so many variables in play. Or, or, or I think, I think you know, that's when people start thinking, well, how safe do I feel there? How comfortable will it be? How easy will it be? Is that country known for being a bit problematic? I'm willing to deal with those issues because that's, those locations are so special. Or, you know what? Life's too short. You know, where are we going to be able to do something that doesn't get in the way of us getting that shooting day that Sharky was talking about? Just in terms of, you know, can you get your days more easily in one place over another? You know, so a lot of that psychological, you could argue, kind of kicks in after you've looked at those numbers that have all balanced out in one way or another. So, εγώ θα ήθελα να ρωτήσω τον Πάνο κάτι το οποίο εγώ ανακάλυψα με έκπληξη και αυτό είναι μια εργασία του ΕΚΟΜΕ. Πάντοτε έχουμε στο μυαλό για την Ελλάδα ότι έχουμε πολύ ωραία τοπία, τα νησιά, το λευκό, τα λευκά σπίτια στα νησιά, τη θάλασσα κτλ. Αλλά κατάλαβα καλά, πολλά φιλμή ήρθαν στην ταινία για να γυρίσουν κάπου αλλού στην Ελλάδα. Πάνω, δύο λόγια γι' αυτό παρακαλώ. Είναι μια καινούργια εικόνα της Ελλάδας που θέλετε να πουλήσετε ή να προτείνετε στους κύριους παραγωγούς. Well, you know, ναι, φυσικά. There are two kinds of, uh... You know, there are two kinds of scripts. There are the kinds of scripts that are made, uh, you know, for, 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 let's say, for Greece, you know, because they have Greece in the story. So they, they have to be shot in Greece. Otherwise, they lose, uh, 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 you know, a huge element of, you know, of, of the production. 
And there are many other, you know, the, 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 most of the other productions that, you know, that they can be shot anywhere uh, if the location is right. Uh, well, for the past uh, couple of years, we had many productions come to Greece that were supposed to be uh, uh, Syria, uh, Lebanon, Israel, uh, Iran, Iraq, uh, 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 southern France, Italy, uh, Spain. Uh, we had uh, actually we have a film coming uh, from uh, Russia, uh, which is uh, set up in the Second World War. And it's, it, it, it's gonna it's gonna be shot in in in, uh, in in one of the Greek mountains in, in which supposed to be Alaska. So we, you know, I, I don't know how close you know the Greek mountains are to Alaska, but uh, uh, probably they are. Uh, so anyway, you know, we had uh, uh, a huge variety of uh, of uh, of films coming. Uh, that that uh, we have a, a science fiction movie coming. Uh, uh, this summer, uh, which, uh, you know, it, it's going to be a science fiction movie. Nobody will understand that it's grief. Uh, it, it's going to be a big budget science fiction movie from a well-known uh, uh, American uh, director. Uh, so, yeah, we managed to, I, I mean, if you see Tehran uh, you know, pro, uh, on Apple TV, uh, you will never understand and, and, and realize that you were shot in Greece. Uh, and uh, you know all the roads and all the signs are in uh, in, the, in, in, in another language. <laughs> ωραία, ωραία. Για να για να θέσουμε τα ρωτήματα σωστά. Γιατί έρχονται στην Ελλάδα; Για να γυρίσουν κάτι που είχε να κάνει με την Τεχεράνη είναι θέμα ασφαλείας. Το καταλαβαίνω αυτό. Αλλά Ρωσία, Ισραήλ. Γιατί; Γιατί αυτός είναι ο πρώτος λόγος που έρχονται στην Ελλάδα. Είναι η αριστεία του συνεργείου ή το πρόγραμμα έκδοσης φόρου ή της επιθέτησης χρημάτων. Especially for the Russian company, it was the fact that they were looking for some military airplanes from the 1940s, from the Second World War, and we we happen to have them. We happen to have actually we are one of the three locations in the in the world that currently has those airplanes in uh, Athens, outside Athens, in, the, in one of the military uh, airports uh, that actually are also operatable, you know, they can fly. So, 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 so they really wanted this, uh, those airplanes and uh, we helped them in, uh, in, 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 ha in having access to those airplanes and this made all the difference. So, 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 so I think the combination of the uh, of things, it's uh, you know, of course, the financial incentives are very attractive, and now with the with the inclusion of the, of non resident labor, I think they are, as the guys at Netflix told us, they are the number one uh, incentive in Europe right now. Uh, but it's not only that. I think that you know we have uh, we have solutions for everything. So I have a question for actually for Sharky, and then for you, Panos, same question in a way. Which is Sharky? How often um, do you find that the post-production service side of it? Obviously, when you're shooting, there is an element of, of post-production, you know, that needs to be ticking away. How often do you find it be where it's a part of the country that you're that you're shooting, you know, on location on? And and how often also, I guess. Pivoting off that, I guess there's not that those many countries that can offer up an interesting visual effects option. You know, obviously Canada, Hungary, UK, US. You know, people like to talk about often, but in terms of post post services while you're shooting, and maybe even oh, the added bonus of hey, I can do some visual effects here under this this tax rebate. How often does that kind of push the needle for for you? I, I, I tend to find that producers are very and by, by producers, I mean studios, are very reluctant to do full post-services finishing um, anywhere other than Los Angeles, New York, or London, depending on where their home offices are. Because obviously post can take over a very, over a very, very long time, and everybody wants to get involved. Um, that being said, um, you know, yes, the day-to-day -day digital daily is, you know, on-set grading, that sort of thing, you know, is a very important um, conduit towards post that has to happen locally. Um, the 
visual effects aspect um, is always a very interesting one because you find hidden around the world in the most unexpected places, very talented visual effects crews. And uh, I, I, I've, I've walked into visual effects houses in, uh, ne never in, uh, uh, I think the last time I was in the region, I was actually, weird enough, I was scouting Macedonia, neighbors just, just next door. And I walked into a visual effects house and I didn't expect to see it, but they were working on the latest massive blockbuster movie for Hollywood, but it was all very quiet because you know, they were subcontracting labor out. Um, so I think the post-production side of things is, is a much harder sell usually. But you, but you feel like for the most part, you, you're able to get the, the uh, digital daily side of it, the just making sure that everything's working properly and feeding the, the post beast of, from afar, that, that's something you typically find. Absolutely. What I have found, um, you know, particularly you know, in, in uh, sort of that part of the world, um, or basically anywhere outside of America, the guys there simplify the process. I, I tend to find that the American companies and crews overcomplicated it and, and cover it in mystery. Okay, wait, that's enough. I don't need to hear any more of this American Get bashing. Out of here. I've, well, I've Get out of here. Anymore. American bashing. So, no, no, what, I, I hear you. What, yeah. what I find is that, that yeah. you know, that, that, that um, they demystify, they take a very simple approach and it really works. It really, really works. So, and so, Panis, yeah. like for, for Greece, is that, do you feel like that's something that you guys have been growing? The, the, you know, the, obviously post services, maybe companies are, are using the whole, you know, from, from A to Z in release. Maybe they're not doing there, but in terms of digital dailies and the other types of production services that Greece can offer, do you feel like you guys are growing in strength in that area? But the thing is, you know, as, uh, as, uh, Shaki said, you know, it's 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 another issue. The whole post-production issue, you know, uh, 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 situation is another issue because of uh, of di digitization. You know, you can shoot the film wherever you want, and, and you can send it. You know, you can send the dailies wherever you want, and and and, and have someone, you know, uh, uh, do all the, the whole post-production process, uh, VFX, and 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 everything. You know, uh, uh, I remember when I went to the studio and and I I was uh, actually. I saw, you know, how Hunter Killer, uh, you know, the latest, the Gerald Butler movie was shot. And they were saying, you know, they shot the movie, many parts of the movie, they shot them in Bulgaria at the new Boyana studios. And they were sending the dailies for post-production and VFX. And, you know, they were sending them, they were sending them to Canada and London. So, 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 so this is, it's, it's a totally, uh, you know, it's, it's another issue. We, we basically, the cash rebate program and the tax relief program, they include, you know, they both include post-production expenses. And we even include also a, a, a subtitling and dubbing, which is, I think, is unique as a cash rebate program. Uh, uh, yes. So localization so, has, been, has become a huge industry with these platforms now. Um, and it's, it's incredible if, if that is included in your rebate. That is, uh, that's a nice little, uh, nice little uh, extra gift. Panos, another question. It's quite easy to understand the percentage or the level of a cash rebate or a tax rebate or a tax incentive. But let's come back to this is very important for the film sector. Uh, Richard was saying five technicians only in South Africa, but 300 in Malaysia. Do you have an idea when a foreign crew is coming to shoot in Greece, how many they are bringing from outside or how many they are using from Greece? Well, you know, uh, uh, so far, so far, because the productions are, are, are uh, uh, you know, are small productions, uh, they are only bringing a few from abroad and most of the crew is from Greece. Uh, currently, currently, as we change the rebate, and we also, you know, we also, you know, we we put it to forty percent, and we also put the non non resident labor. We are witnessing now in two thousand twenty one a huge change, as we have more and more big budget movies coming. You know, we have Disney coming, we have Paramount coming, we have uh, 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 Tom Hanks coming with the Nia Vardalos. And, and 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 you know they you know all, all these productions are gonna start using you know larger crews and this is gonna put the Greece into a test 
but from the initial numbers that I have, for example, uh, Mia Vardalo's movie that I know that you know they're coming in a, in a couple of months, they're gonna have a crew of 300 people, and from those 300 people, uh, 200, 290 are gonna be Greek. They're gonna bring only 10, uh, 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 you know, a crew, uh, only a staff of 10 people uh, from the States or from uh, Canada. And they will probably be the heads of departments, you know, the, the director of photography, the set designer. Uh, so, so, so I think that uh, uh, if we manage also to set up a proper uh, 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 skills program as uh, uh, Sharky you know, uh, uh, described in South Africa, I don't think we're gonna have a problem. I think we have to be very, uh, 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 we have to uh, 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 be very fast in our response. The, the, the one thing I would add to that is just, well, the only thing I'd add to that is also, you know, the, the level of support that you're having from, you know, government uh, needs to be patient as well. Because, you know, I, I've been in countries where we, we shoot one season of a show and then the politicians come down and say, hey, you did it. Uh, you don't need these uh, internationals anymore. We've got a local crew. They can do it all. And they don't realize you know, it, it takes time. It takes time, and this is what Hungary did so successfully. Yeah. You know? I remember, I, I remember the the uh, 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 the owner of New Boyana Studios in in Bulgaria. The, the you know the the American. He told me that when they bought when they bought the studios fifteen years ago, in the in the movies that they were actually shooting for Millennium Media, they were using ninety uh, percent or ninety five percent from abroad and five or ten percent from Bulgaria. I just watched. I just watched the latest uh, 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 Sylvester Stallone Rambo movie, which was shot at the New Bulgaria. And the guys told me, if you see the credits, they are all Bulgarian. In Rambo. So, Panos, how many crews do you have? Like, when you think, like, because often Sharky and I will talk about different countries, and we'll, I'll just innocently ask, well, how many crews do you think that country has? You know, because they'll talk about different countries and go. Well, okay, so you know, there's three major productions there, that, so you're you're kind of you're you're going to need to do more of a hybrid of people in the country and outside of the country. Do, do you do you have a clear feeling yet of where Greece is at in terms of like we've got three, four, five, six crews that we think think you know, uh, you know, can handle large production? I cannot tell you. I, I cannot. I cannot tell you. But you know, uh, 2021 is going to be a good test for that. I, I will. Tell, I, I will. Tell, I, I will tell you, you know, next Christmas. Yeah, fair enough. Sharky, I have one last question for you. Sorry, if I just may ask you this quick question. When you're looking at these different countries, how much is the uh, type of stages available or lack thereof an issue for you? Because obviously, if you recall way back when on Rings, we had a couple of great stages, but then we shot in a lot of warehouses. So, you know, how much of that plays into account, you know, no matter the size of the production, for you guys, and and then I, you know, Panos can tell us what he's got for that. Yeah, you know, it, it's always nice to have big fancy sound stages in a in a well locked off, secure studio environment. But as I as I often say, I'm standing there in countries and locations. Uh, I often remind them of the fact that on Lord of the Rings, we shot in a paint factory. You know, and that's then that was the genesis of Stone Street Studios, but. Uh, you can shoot anywhere, but you, you have to make compromises, you know. Um, so it is, but it's always better to be in a sound stage where you've got full control. But otherwise, you can make you can make it work. It just depends how precious um, or how demanding, you know, that your your, uh, your 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 director and DP and sound man are. What do you got, Panis? Have you got nice stages for us? Well, <laughs> well. No. In Greece, in Greece, we have uh, we have small sound stages uh, compared to the sound stages you know that you can find in London, for example. Uh, you know they they are they are mostly used for uh, TV series, which is a thriving industry here in Greece. And uh, but we currently have two big investors that they they expressed interest in building sound stages in Greece, and uh, we are looking into that now. Uh, yeah, which is, you know, it's, uh, it, it's, it's, it's nice. It's a process. Yeah. yeah. 
Patrice, you were going to say something, Patrice. I, I was afraid we might have cut you off. Sharky, is there any other, any other things that, that kind of pop? Because I, I, do, I do think that, that that one program you came across in South Africa uh, was great. And, you know, it's, it's wonderful to hear that they're doing that. It's like, it, it, it'd be nice to see that replicated throughout the world. Maybe, it, maybe it's becoming more and more so. Was there any, not to put you on the spot, was there anything else that you were like, oh, you know, this was kind of interesting, this other country was doing in a way to kind of help facilitate, you know, more business or better collaborative environment with the people of that country and foreign crews? Yeah, you know, I think we sort of hit the sweet spots, you know, in terms of, you know, education and knowledge transfer and financial support and infrastructure. And, you know, everyone's at a slightly different level and they, they bring different things to the party. Um, you know, I'm in Australia right now and, you know, they have a, you know, a very evolved incentive program and, uh, but they're suffering from their own success as well. I mean, there's a, you know, there is the old notion in business, you can grow too fast. And, you know, I have a show running in Melbourne right now and, because of the pandemic um, and this notion that Australia is seen as a safe place to be, uh, there has been a rush of, of international shows coming into Australia. And now it's very difficult to crew up with local people first, or then interstate people who you're flying across Australia, because you know, there's lots of people here, and then finally bringing an international crew. So you have to be sensitive to that at the moment when you're budgeting um, and telling the story to your financier. Um, but yes, there might've been a film that came in last year that just took five technicians, but this year um, there are five more film crew, uh, five more film productions in town. So you're gonna have to bring more than five international. You're, you're gonna have to bring in 50 because the local crew base has now been diluted across so many more shows. So it's a dynamic ongoing situation that you just have to be aware of uh, and not get tripped up on. Um, and that's where we rely very heavily on, 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 you know, local production service companies, their knowledge and the support that they have from the National Film Commissions. Panos, are there any, um, are there any, in the same way that there's this thing called the European Union? I mean, is there any kind of, um, for a, for a country like Greece, like uh, any sort of, well, we have a close relationship with our neighboring country. If we if we find we need to add crew or, or service or something, there's, you know, this country next door. Or, or if you're looking for, you're doing a, a, sea, a, sea, a sea show and, you know, granted you can be out on the ocean and you've got your, your camera bars and all the rest, but, you know, it'd be sure nice to have a, uh, you know, infinity pool. Ah, there's Malta not far away and we've got a close relationship with Malta. Is there anything like that? that that goes on with your organization or, or, or with, you know, what well, you guys you know, are trying to do there? Listen, it, it's, it, it's obviously, you know, they are the, the, the Balkan countries, you know, you know are, are up on the north and very close to Greece. And it's easy, you know, but it's also, you know, you, you see in Greek productions, you know, like, for example, uh, when we need the costumes, uh, many of the costumes come from Italy uh, because they have a huge uh, variety of costumes there, you know, and in very good prices for, uh, for rental. Uh, uh, of course, you know, Balkan, Balkan, uh, you know, uh, uh, crew is much cheaper than uh, than other crew all over Europe. So, so and very so, experienced and and, and very, very experienced, experienced. Uh, very experienced, very experienced. Serbia, Montenegro, uh, uh, Romania, uh, Romania, Romania. Yeah, um, you know, when I was in Hungary um, last time, I took a big production there. I think actually was Marco Polo. And we ended up going across the border to Slovakia uh, because two reasons. One, Hungary didn't have the mountains that we needed, but Slovakia do. They had some beautiful uh, mountainscapes bordering Poland. And uh, two, also Slovakia were trying to push their own industry and had a, um, had a rebate program, which was designed specifically to work in harmony with the Hungarian one. It, 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 we were able, strangely enough, um, without harming either country's um, um, ambition to take Hungarian crew into Slovakia to continue attracting the Hungarian rebate, but also attracting a Slovakian rebate on top of that. And that was 
I don't know if it was by design, luck or judgment um, between the two governments, but both governments got the in inward investment that they needed. They got the cash tech registers ringing, they got the taxes paid back into the coffers of their particular countries. And the film benefited from being able to, to um, enjoy both sets of rebates. That's a, a fairly evolved way of, of, of working, the tax incentive and rebate system, which can often make the difference between certainly um, independently financed films, making up the difference between being able to finance and make the movie or not. You know, we did something very similar years ago in, um, uh, on a film for Focus Features. Um, you know, we couldn't afford to shoot it in the UK, up in Scotland, it was just too expensive. But we needed the Scottish landscapes, so we shot the show mostly in Hungary on their stages and then took the Hungarian crew to Scotland. And we're, again, we were able to travel that Hungarian rebate and enjoy the Scottish rebate, and everyone was a winner at the, in, in the end. So, so, so Sharky, I, I kind of want to steal you for one last thing, though, about these large productions. This is a bit of an unfair question, but when you go into a country, let's say you go to Greece, and you're trying to figure these things out, how, how much do you take into account, like, okay, well, I'm only bringing these keys, I'm bringing these HODs or, or not. Um, how do you deal with, with, you know, just, well, how, how seamless is this production going to be if, you know, the crew, you know, is all local, but you're going to have a crossover between your designer and, you know, let's say in the costume department, you got your costume designer. At what point are you transitioning to the local crew? It, how much is language an issue? How do you, how do you navigate those things or how much does that become an, an issue for you, um, you know, in terms of dealing with these large productions in a country like Greece? You, you, you navigate it carefully. Um, and with respect, you know, to um, you know, whatever the local culture is, um, you know, predominantly, you know, the, the work that I work on is English language driven um, for um, you know, an English language audience. And therefore you bring in the, he the heads of department um, because they will know what the, the client, if you like, the financier, the studio um, are demanding in terms of the way in which the camera is moved, the way in which a story is told, because every, every country, every region has their own cinematic language, their own cinematic history. You know, the expectations of an Indian audience and what they see on screen is very different from the expectation of a Chinese audience or an American or a British or Australian. So a lot of bringing in the, the, you know, the international crew is, is, is very often not because we don't believe that the skills levels are at a certain point. They might be very highly skilled, but what they might be lacking is the, the cultural nuance which is expected in the country of primary viewing, um, which traditionally the biggest market has been America. But you now see a big shift. You get a shift of the money and the finance uh, is moving towards high-end television, it's moving towards your Netflixes, your Apples, your HBOs, um, uh, your Amazons, and a bunch of other streaming platforms, which have a very much more of a global outlook. You know, Netflix themselves, you know, five years ago, 80% of their subscriber base was, was English language and 20% was, 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 um, was not English language, you know. But they wanted to change their model for global domination around because they realized that actually 80% of the world don't speak English. They would prefer 80% local language and 20% English. So we're in a really strange position right now, but and it's not just about language. It is about cultural sensitivity. It is about cultural expectation and it's about exporting national values. Um, you know, Australian filmmaking has a certain flavor about it. They've got some very, very good Australian films that that have gone around the world, like be it, you know, Kate Winslet was in The Dressmaker a few years ago, Priscilla, Queen of the Desert. They're all very Australian films and they have traveled and they've sold internationally. Um, so it is an opportunity in this new world that we're living in, you know, with, with these global distribution platforms for countries to sell and promote their culture. Um, you know, I, I, I guess, uh, I don't know if it's a good or a bad example, but how, how many years ago you know, 
did, did my big fat Greek wedding, you know, come out and, and show the world a celebration of, of, of Greek culture. Um, you know, of, yes, it's through a comedy, and yes, I think a lot of the, the, the characters I'm sure were heightened and caricatured, but it, I'm guessing it was an export of Greek cultural values. So, and there are probably many more examples that you know, we could bring up and discuss, but I'm sure they're very politicizing as well. Yeah, P Panis, how do you, in terms of your, the cruise, how much is language, you know, is, is there a, you know, in terms of dealing with, you know, translation and well, no, thankfully it's a, it's someone's a, translating we, my stupid statements throughout this talk, but, um, you know, in terms of cruise, how, how, how do you guys well, you know, because we, because we are a tourist country and, and, and we focus very much on, you know, on the language issue, we, you know, uh, all schools in Greece, whether they are public or private, you know, they have three or four languages that we learn and, and English is the second language in Greece. So, so, so that's not a problem. That's, that's definitely not a problem. You know, they, 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 they are, they, they are all more or less fluent in the, in, especially in the English language and you know many 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 of them many of them know also a third language whether it's German Italian uh, French uh, uh, Arabic uh, uh, Russian uh, you know that it's it's uh, but I'd like also to comment on on Saki's uh, point that uh, uh, through the platforms I, I think there is a, a it's a great way for other cultures to promote their own productions and uh, you know we see we see many countries like like the, the Scandinavian countries with their dramas and their uh, 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 and their police you know and, you know the the, the detective thrillers yeah. that they have. Noir. yes exactly yeah. uh, you know the the Latin American productions the Turkish uh, TV series the soap operas. Uh, uh, there, are, there, there are many cases, and I think that Greece can capitalize on that uh, if we play it well. You know, it's a it's a great access for uh, for local production to thrive through the platforms and be introduced globally. Αν και είχαμε κάποια προβλήματα στην αρχή τεχνικά, η κουβέντα πήρε μια πάρα πολύ ωραία ροή και πάρα πάρα πολύ ενδιαφέρουσα. Χαριστούμε. Πολύ. Αν δεν έχετε κάτι άλλο να, <συμπίσεις> να, <συμπίσεις> να, να συμπληρώσετε, ε, θα ήθελα να ευχαριστήσω πάρα πολύ τον α, Πάνο Κουάνη για αυτή την, α, την ευκαιρία που έχει δώσει α, μέσα από αυτή τη κουβέντα και, και στους α, Αμερικανούς παραγωγούς να καταλάβουν ακριβώς περί τίνος πρόκειται και τι γίνεται αυτή τη στιγμή στην Ελλάδα και τι επιχειρούμε να κάνουμε. Τον Ρίτσο Σάρκε για όλη αυτή την πολύ μεγάλη του εμπειρία που την κατέθεσε σήμερα σαν εδώ μαζί μας και πραγματικά ήταν αρκετά πολύ διαφωτιστική κάτω από πολλά, πολλά, πολλά σημεία. Το Ρίκ, ο οποίος έχει μια μεγάλη εμπειρία και σε συνεργασίες με πάρα πολλοί, πολλούς ανθρώπους, οπότε μπορεί να το δει πολύ σφαιρικά το θέμα. Νομίζω ότι θα μπορούσαμε να κλείσουμε εδώ την κουβέντα. Θα ήθελα απλώς να πω ότι όλη, όλη αυτή η κουβέντα πάρα πολύ σύντομα θα έχει ανέβει στο YouTube, ε, οπότε θα μπορέσει να την, όποιος θα, θα ήθελε να μπει και να την δει και θα, θα μείνει στο YouTube, στο κανάλι YouTube του EFF. Ευχαριστώ πολύ. Περιμένουμε τον Ρίτσαρτ και τον Ρίκ να δουλέψουν στην Ελλάδα να, ε, και να τους, να, με όλους, αυτού, όλους αυτούς τους πάρα πολλούς ανθρώπους που μπορούν να φέρουν και εμεί θα είμαστε ακριβώς ε, στο ύψος όλων αυτών των περιστάσεων γιατί η Ελλάδα πιστεύω ότι είναι πια έτοιμη. Θα έλεγα, θα έλεγα και από την εμπειρία μου από την Ιταλία, ίσως και σε αυτή τη φάση, θα μπορούσα να πω ότι είναι και πιο έτοιμη και από την... σίγουρα από το κέντρο και κάτω της Ιταλίας είναι πιο έτοιμη. Mm. Ο Βοράς μας... εντάξει, ο Βοράς της Ιταλίας έχει τις ίδιες δυνατότητες με μας. Ευχαριστώ πάρα πάρα πολύ για, για σήμερα με αυτή την κουβέντα. Ε, ελπίζω να σας δω πάρα πολύ συχνά, να σας βλέπω συχνά εδώ στην Ελλάδα και να σας δω πολύ σύντομα. Richard and Rick, thank you. Πάνος, thank you so much. Εγώ ευχαριστώ και τους, και τους δύο εδώ. Και το... Και τον Ρίκ και τον Ρίτσαρντ και εσένα για την φιλοξενία. Thank you, Nicole. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you all. And I, I look forward to seeing you here in, in Greece. Thank you, Patrice, also. Mm -hmm.
Yes, Patrice, thank you.